Secured one of the biggest recording deals in history, nine months after the King of Pop's death. Well, joining me live in the studio is Jonathan Morris, a former Sony PR who worked with Mr. Jackson himself, and it's a staggering amount of money to me. Are you surprised by the scale of the deal? No, I'm not, actually. I think you have to put it into some kind of context, because you know, record companies have a very, very difficult time. They've always been in a high-risk business, and I think what's happened over the last 15 years or so as technology and the internet have come on, that risk has got even harder and harder. I mean, it takes roughly about a million pounds to invest in a new artist. And actually, only last week, a report came out that showed that to find, develop, and market new artists, labels, big and small, are investing around 30% of their total revenues. Now, that 30% actually represents something like five billion dollars. So if you look at the Michael Jackson deal that Sony had done, where I've seen in the US press figures of around 200 to 250 million dollars, then you begin to get a sense of the nature of the deal and the sense behind okay, the deal. Okay, but, but in simple terms, Jonathan, Sony is banking on the fact that there are lots of people out there who will buy anything with Jacko's face on the cover. And I think, I think they're absolutely right. I mean, I think he is one of the greatest artists of all time. I mean, along with Sinatra, Presley, Beatles, and the Beatles, and Michael Jackson, you have, I mean, he's left behind a legacy of music, and we've only heard some of it, but he's left behind a legacy of music that really will be remembered forever. It's, it's the, some of the greatest music of the second half of the 20th century, in my view. I, I, that's not a good point. I mean, I, I like the earlier stuff, like a lot of people did, and, and up to Thriller, perhaps, but, but there are critics who say that he hadn't, in fact, made a decent record for a while. Well, everyone has their views, um, certainly when I was spending a lot of time with him, and that was right up until sort of the early noughties. Actually, the fans loved Dangerous was one of his, you know, that, that always came through when I was mixing with the fans when we were going around the world. It, it, I think he's made fantastic records, you know, all the way up to Invincible. You know, the, the, this is it. A double CD came out in 2009. This is the movie. Yeah, yeah. But there was a movie. And there was a movie as well, which yeah. broke all records. Yeah. yeah. Broke exactly. records of the DVD exactly. sales, broke records when the film came out. Double CD last year sold five million copies. The demand is, is enormous. It's another question. I mean, the immediate aftermath, the shock of it was extraordinary. The immediate aftermath, yes, a lot of records, DVDs, DVDs are going to be sold, but is it not going to wear off a bit? No, quality survives, and and there's a, you know it really does. It, 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 this is this is music. You know, we've all grown up with it and lived with it. This is music that I genuinely believe will be listened to in 100, 200 years' time. I mean, he's, he has just left behind a fantastic legacy of music. And as I say, we've only heard some of it. And do you think there's another kind of Billie Jean or Thriller or The Girl Is Mine or something as good as that that we haven't heard? I think, there's, I think there's great music. I mean, I can remember being with him in Australia in 96 when we... Sony, when I was at Sony, we needed a new record from him. Went up to his hotel room and we just, we spent the evening listening to stuff and that's how Blood on the Dance Floor came out. He was a very prolific writer. He was always in the studio doing this, doing that. I've been privileged to hear some stuff. I know from reading the, the, the papers that the Sony executives have heard an awful lot more. There's some great stuff around, trust me. Lovely to talk to you, Jonathan. Thank you very much. But More on that Jackson deal with Mike and Martin Stanford in dot com in a couple of minutes. There. You know, Michael Jackson's estate has signed a deal that means he will remain the king of pop. The record-breaking multi-million pound agreement with Sony includes new albums and even a video game. Sky Showbiz correspondent Steve Hargrave reports. It may be almost nine months after his death shocked the world, but now it seems there is still much more to come with Michael Jackson. Today, Sony have signed a deal worth $250 million, which will allow them to release 10 Jackson projects over the next seven years. <laughs> they still signed, but with a legacy as in demand as Jackson's, it could also be the most lucrative. $250 million? This guy's going to make billions of dollars still. His estate are going to be the richest people 
in the music industry in the world. It's going to be like Elvis Presley, but bigger. <laughs> <laughs> it's well known that major artists often make more money from Beyond the Grave. Last year, Elvis Presley still raked in about £36 million, pounds, despite dying more than 30 years ago. Then, of course, there's John Lennon, who made just under £10 million pounds last year, and Jimi Hendrix, who earned £5 million, and he died back in 1970. Already last year, Jackson's CDs made him even more than that. He sold more than 30 million albums since June. The album This Is It was the first posthumous release to be included in this new deal. You can also look at the continued popularity of tie-ins like this successful theatre show here in London to realise that if they handle it correctly, the King of Pop's legacy can be a real money spinner. Michael Jackson was and is the biggest artist in the world. Um, 40 years of recordings, uh, lots of unreleased material. Um, he was a perfectionist. Uh, meticulous in the studio and there's lots of material that was never released and stuff and there's lots of the fans to look forward to. So what can fans expect? Well according to today's deal there will be a re-release of Off the Wall plus a series of albums and unreleased material beginning in November. Then there's the books, the DVDs and the video games. But is there a danger fans could be ripped off? I think there is a danger that, that if you're seen to be exposing something that people will react in a cynical way. Obviously the media might, um, and if the fans do, then you know what, you're, you're onto a bad thing. But I think with, with Michael's fans, they're just so loyal and so dedicated, and they define themselves by wanting to, to do everything they can to show their love for Michael and to preserve his legacy. <laughs> So is today's deal the sound of the barrel being scraped, or are we once again about to see why Jackson was called the King of Pop? We may have thought this was it, but now it seems there is plenty more to come. Steve Hargraves, Sky News. And in about 15 minutes' time, we'll be...